Hello, my name's Simon, uh, Simon Bryant. I um, run a um, products business called Insight Village. Um, we're a, a partner of Catalyst 14, providing um, 360 degree feedback, team climate assessment and employee engagement um, as part of the coaching program that you're taking part in. We um, give some brief insight into a 360 that's available. Obviously, there are others. Um, and as part of this course that you're on, there are preferential rates. But um, what we'd like to do today is just talk you through 360 as a product. It's quite common. Lots of people have come across 360 now. It's not. It's not. It's been around for about 30, 35 years as a, as a concept. Obviously, the technology has changed over those years. Um, and what we'd like to do today is just introduce you to the notion of of 360. Uh, I guess getting everyone on on the same page, as it were, and providing some insight to how how the tool works, things for consideration, how our product could support you in your coaching engagements with your clients as you move forward through this program and beyond. Um, so what I'd like to do is talk you through that now. So I think the, the, the fundamentals and the basis for the reason why 360 exists um, is, is confidentiality or anonymity. So if we lived in the, I guess, in the perfect world, people would be able to um, give feedback in the moment People will be in a position to understand and hear it and be accepting of it. And we'd all move forward with some, some learning in the moment. But the nature, I guess, of organisations is that's either not always possible, both through physical, ge ge um, geographical constraints, or, or fundamentally um, a sense of actually, can I really be as honest as I want to be in that moment in time to someone's face? Do I feel capable to do that? Um, and, and what 360 does is act as a mechanism to to provide feedback anonymously um, to to an individual so that they can they can first of all have asked to have gone through the process and therefore perhaps be more accepting of hearing the feedback but also the individual giving it can can at least have some sense of not feeling quite so overexposed the service in in the nature of 360 suppliers like ourselves um, is that actually the, the the data is processed by a third party giving some sense of security to the individual, this is this is not handled by the organisation. The data isn't there for them to see. They're only ever going to see um, combined reports. So no raw data is seen um, by the client, or even indeed by yourselves or Catalyst fourteen. You will only ever see a um, compiled combined report of data. Uh, the way in which our system works is we produce the report in PDF. Um, so that can be easily, obviously, moved around to, to yourselves. You can pass that on to your clients, um, and uh, and. And hard copies are also available. Uh, the, I guess the, the distribution methods for it um, often often two copies, um, and and we say that we make a point of that because fundamentally, in, in terms of integrity in the process, so how many copies are in existence? Again, people around confidentiality want to know. You know, is, has this gone to my boss? Is it is it has it gone somewhere else? Um, and uh, is it being used in any other way? And as part of your contracting process, as part of the, the upfront conversation around your coaching, the processes you might use, the use of a 360, obviously this, this is something you can agree upfront. So who will see it? How is it going to be used? Is it a one-on-one -on -one coaching session using the 360? Is it a one-on two with my, with my manager um, so that we, we can all get some learning from it? But that's fundamentally as, as part of your coaching and whatever the engagement is that you're involved in, you'll be able to agree that. Um, so personal coaching by um, an accredited user, and as as part of this program, so the the concepts and things you'll go through with Damien over this time will will give you insight into the three hundred and sixty, how to use it, obviously the coaching practices. Um, so what what we would do the first time you come to use this tool, we would give you some some help with the the propositioning of the tool, but also once the data comes back, we would give you some um, sort of thirty minutes of of mentoring or or briefing around the tool so that you feel completely equipped to use the product whenever you go through this process. So what is it comprised of? So our the three the 360 they come in lots of different gu um, styles, guises, um, but fundamentally ours is, is broken down and, and we we operate from the perspective of the simplest approach. So we don't put in there standard deviation or complicated maths or anything that's difficult to get people get your head around it's it's fundamentally simple simple style uh, simple um, calculations so averages a sense of variance 
so that people can understand the differences between their scores. So you get an overall summary looking from the overview, giving you a sense of at the at the high level what is what is um what is the data saying. Um, a breakdown by area or quadrant. So you get a sense of of those those key areas. What are the what are the breakdowns of those results? Um, what's the difference between direct reports and other scores? So you get a sense of the difference in averages between your direct reports, your self score, and others. Um, we can provide a we can provide and don't do it as standard, but we can provide a percentile score so you can look at your score relative to other managers. Um, as I said, it already provide, it provides a variation rating, so you get a sense of what's the spread of scores across the direct report. So has someone scored you particularly high, and someone else scored you low, giving you an understanding of am I consistent in the way that I am I'm working with those individuals around that particular facet. What you also get is a snapshot um, traffic light system, so you have a sense of you know in one view where might I want to focus development. Um, and then you also get qualitative questions, so a sense of putting the meat on the bones, asking individuals, you know, what is it that I do already do really well? What is it you really need from me? Um, and we have uh, four standard questions, and then we'll talk more about that shortly. Um, but you can also tailor and add your own um, as part of that setup process. So there's, there's loads of scoring mechanisms people use, agreement scales, frequency scales. Um, we use a competence scale in our standard 360, but again, this is... This is the standard off-the-shelf version, but if you want to create, you're able to create a tailored, you're able to create tailored versions of this tool. So using your own question sets, you could set up a 360. And if you wanted to change that scale to a one to six or a one to four or whatever it might be, you're you're able to do that. But ours is a is a is a competency scale scoring with a cannot comment, um, and important to understand that that cannot comment is. Um, a zero and it, it doesn't it doesn't affect the score so that score comes out of the averages and then the other scores are, are one to five so ineffective through to exceptional in our standard what we also ask is and how important is that particular particular element so when against each question we we'll say what's the competence of the individual how are they performing in that in that area and how important is to their role right now and and that's because I guess in lots of ways this is a, a, a generic leadership model and what we what we don't want to do is say that everything's important for individuals because that doesn't help when you're looking at the shopping list of the things that you might want to focus on. So using the importance rating, they're able to look at, okay, so is it important right now? Is it critical to my role and there's a development need? Or actually, is it something that's sort of peripheral importance and therefore maybe something I should be thinking about for the next move, for the next for the next um, uh, move in, or career move in, in what I'd like to do? So you get you get the data displayed in different ways. So part of that is um, an overall radar, which, as you can see from the radar here on the on the left hand side, you're able to see very clearly what what the what the differences are in in views from the self, from the manager, from the peers. Um, that's also can be displayed in bar form, so you get a sense of the numbers, and again, just another way of viewing it. And that's that's part of our our view around ensuring that the data is is accessible in lots of different ways, in, in cuts and angles. Um, and the way that we display it so that you're really able to to um, to get into the data rather than the data being a, a, st a stumbling block or something you need to get over. You also get um, a breakdown by summary, so you get the, uh, the competency shown, which in this scenario is establishing purpose and direction, um, and then you get the questions themselves. So in these in each, against each of these questions, what you'll see is the question, and this is the question we actually, when we, when we run these reports, what we show you here is the actual question shown when um, when the individual is going through the process. The only difference will be is whether it's about me, myself, so um, a first person focus question, or whether it's to the reviewers. Um, so this, for, from a face validity perspective, these are the questions. And then what you'll then see is your self score, the manager score, a combined direct report, so combined peers, and if you have them, combined others. Um, where you have those combined scores, you're also able to see um, the variance, which is just you'll see just below on that data table, so low in in the examples there, but it could be medium or high, showing the differences between those between those scores. So, what you're able to see within that is getting a sense of that that spread of scores is. Uh, a low variance means that everyone has scored you the same or no more than one point apart. Uh, medium variance is between two and three points apart. So uh, 
That could be a, a five and a, a five and a three, or a high variance, and that's potentially you know a, a one and a five. So again, if you when as you're looking at the data, it's just another way, another way to cut into the data. Say, what is what is really going on within the data? Am I well potentially consistently great and doing really well? Am I um, inconsistent in there are varying, widely varying views around the way in which I perform against that particular asset, um, facet within the within the 360? What are the reasons for variance? Well, you know, there's there's, there's lots of reasons why people rate why they rate. Some people, um, you know, you hear I, I'll never give a five, and therefore you've already you've already reduced the uh, the rating scale down to, to one to four, um, because nothing's ever perfect. Um, other other things that can be going on so 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 prejudice prejudice or preference so actually my style is very different to your style and therefore relative to me I don't I don't rate that as good or relative to me I rate it as really positive it's it's fantastic um, so my the sense of my managers having different um, expectations of where I should be or what I should be doing um, inconsistent um, or different views across across the group just fundamentally it could be and these could be reasons why for that could be difference in experience. So if I'm a uh, someone entering a sales team and I have one year's experience and I'm rating someone that's had 20 years experience, I might think you know they're they're the new sales deity. They're the new you know they're they're, they're amazing. Whatever everything they do. However, if I'm a a sales rep of 20 25 years rating someone of 20 years, I might think well they still got some stuff to learn. So that sense of experience it could be relative as to why the scores are there. Um, Distance, so that sense of geography. Actually, I, I don't work and see this person every day. I'm I'm remotely working with them, therefore I don't see them in every every asset. I get a sense of what they're like through my interactions with them. It could be that I, I do treat people with favoritism. I have favourite team members or peers that I'm working with. Uh, sexism, ages, and racism. Okay, all, all all things to be considered. They're 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 there. Things do the things can be felt by individuals and, and I guess that the point is with what we're trying to say is there's lo lots of reasons why you can get variance in the score um, and these are these are some of those um, to explore and I think at this stage uh, and one thing I didn't say right at the beginning of this was it's really important to understand that our 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 products are about um, dialogue creation so all of the way in which the data is laid out all of the different cuts and the sense of the variance and the average ratings and the showing of the different scores per group is purely there to create the dialogue for the individual. It's up to them where they see importance and the things that they want to focus on. And, and I guess our jobs as the coach and coaching them through this process is to, to help them to understand and be ob objective about what the data is saying and help them really to start to define what it is they want to do about this information that they, they've got in front of them. Um, so when it comes to the important scale, we get um we give you a, a, a variation um sorry a, a two by two a two by two graph which shows you the, the variation of scores or the spread of scores across the across the graph. So from left to right across the um that axis you have performance and that's going from um one through to, to five and then um from the bottom to the top you have the importance rating again going from one to five. So you get this a sense of where am I scoring and each of those quadrants gives you a sense of of, of what, what's going on there so everything in the top right would be seen as a strength for current role because I'm both performing I'm above effective um, and the importance there's, a, there's an importance um, to what I'm doing everything top left would be seen as um, a priority need because actually it's been seen as important but actually the performance isn't isn't effective or above uh, then you have the, the two bottom quadrants and on the left hand side you have long term development needs. This is the sense that actually it's neither important and neither is the performance high. But it might be something, it doesn't mean to say it's less important, it might just be that actually for the role I'm in right now that's not important but if I want to make the next jump, these might be the prime things I need to focus on. And the bottom right we have supporting strengths. So that sense of, um, Actually, this is something I've it's deemed to be important, deemed to be um, of high performance or high competence, but actually fundamentally not important to my role. So these might be overdone strength things I can actually think. Well, actually, maybe I'm putting too much into that, um, and I could put less effort there and, and move that elsewhere, perhaps. But again, this is just another way to view view the data in the in the process. Um, the traffic lights, which I mentioned before, so 
um, in a one in a one page snapshot view, you're able to get a sense of um, based on the norm group, or, or um, you're able to look at very clearly uh, where am I performing, where do I see myself, um, green, red, amber, um, and where do others see me against that? And you know, really nice, easy way to sort of compare the overall scores within each of those with each of those um, competencies. Um, and I think it's really important to say that you know this is the numbers here are based on our um, our norm curve or bell curve. However, if you're creating a bespoke 360, obviously we've got no previous data on a bespoke 360. You can set those to be weighted towards really trying to push performance. You can have a nice even spread of the bell curve. It's entirely up to you. That's that's perfectly tailorable um, within your uh, within your um, design and remit of the 360. And what I said before is also um, the opportunity to to add free text comments, and and these are invaluable. And I think anyone that's been through 360 would say that the you know at the comments at the end are sometimes the thing that people really relish and really want to look at. What have people said about me? Um, but but equally, when you're looking at it from the data perspective, they're the thing that when you're perhaps prepping or trying to understand what's really going on here, they're the thing that can really give you in, in, insight into into what people think about this individual where they might really want to focus their time based on the individual's own perspective or the reviewer's own perspective. Um, and these are our four, our four standard questions. So please describe up to three things that make this, per, um, make this person effective as a leader. Um, but, but if you actually look at the, this is about stop, start, continue, um, um, and then the catch all of any other comments. But as I said before, you know, you can change, you can change these questions. You can add to these questions, um, what we find generally from a from a coaching perspective, stop, start, continue is a really lovely um, way just to get into the information and, and really start to focus the mind around. I don't want to lose these things, these things, but I need to stop doing because they're disruptive. And these are things I really need to start doing in order to, to become effective or be more effective. Now, with with Damien, you're you'll do much more about reactions to feedback in, um, and and the, the, the feedback process. But I think the, it's just, just, just to add, you know, different people are going to act in different ways when it comes to, to receiving feedback. Some people are, are positive and really relish the opportunity. Some people are scared or nervous about what people might say. Some people feel like it's a done to kind of process. So that, that, that contracting and setting them up in the first place to understand that, you know, this is a, this process can only be seen from a, this perspective of, you know, pe this is taking people's time, um, and therefore, you know, looking at the data, I need to be objective around what what people are saying, um, and perhaps, you know, as our job as the coaches is to support whatever the reaction is to support them through that through that process. Um, and here's the um, the Kubler Ross uh, feedback change curve or the change curve. And, and and people will, will go through you know um, go through this process quite quickly. I don't know if anyone's ever seen the uh, the Simpsons, but there's a there's one where Homer goes through that change curve in in like thirty seconds, and he goes through each of the uh, each of these um, these elements from stability, immobilization, anger, denial, bargaining, and it's it's a minute if that thirty seconds. But sometimes when you're given a bit of feedback, actually it takes more time to absorb what's being said and really understand what it means. Go away and really think about it. Um, you know, go through these stages before you're at a point where you can accept it, or, or actually where you've got more questions. Um, you want to test more. You maybe you don't quite make it to acceptance because you can't fully understand what it's what it's saying. But yeah, the nature of, of feedback will elicit responses because if, certainly if it's something that is unknown or not expected, people will go through this and they will go through it at different speeds depending on the individual and, and the and the um, I guess their level of unawareness around around the particular thing they've been told and, and i think like i started to allude to just then about um how people how people receive receive feedback when you go through a 360 process people have given time um to you or to the individual going through this process so it can only be seen as a gift someone spent 25 30 minutes to to give you feedback um, and i think you've got to be able to see it in, in that context um, it's it's there to support and benefit your the individual's performance. So giving insights into into what other groups of individuals think about your your current performance, 
Um, and I think that 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 framing the context of what is it, um, what is it you want to get out of this, and where's the balance of strengths. So we operate quite a, a positive inquiry method to the way in which we use this tool, and I guess that comes down to your own coaching style. But fundamentally, we're we're looking for not just for where are the areas for development, but actually what are the core strengths? Where can we really pull those out? What are the things that make up the essence of this individual's um, delivery or whatever it is they're doing? Um, where, are the, where are the strengths they're already showing? Um, but also, how could they improve that? Where are the areas for development? And and I think it's 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 about leadership behaviours over time. So when we talk to and ask our reviewers to complete for this, it's it's not thinking about the conversation we had in a meeting yesterday, but thinking about how has this person performed over the last three to six months of working with them? What is what are their what is their their sort of co what's your common understanding across that time, rather than a snapshot in the pan view of of yesterday because we had a had a run in in a meeting or whatever it might be. Um, and, I, and I think one of the other things that I certainly always try to contract with with any coaches I work with in this process is is is, is making sure we recognise it as a gift and therefore we're thanking people for their time and effort. Um, and that could be through sharing what you're going to do with the data. Um, that could just be simply a you know, thanks for completing my 360. And again, this I think this helps to encourage if you wanted to do this process again as a um, to get a remeasure and an understanding of any any sort of shift or improvement. Um, that that simple thank you might might be the thing that makes someone complete it again the following time. Um, and I think the other thing is the data is the data. Um, so ensuring that actually as as the coach is taking individuals through this process, we don't make sure that we're not we might be thinking about the individuals that might have scored high and low, but it's not about the witch hunt. It's not about it's just about understanding their context, why they might have rated the way they've rated, and therefore understanding that there's something we might want to do about that. The coaching session can run in lots of different ways, and here's just a, an example of what a coaching session could look like. So looking at recommending time, so we'd recommend a minimum of an hour, ideally an hour and a half to two hours is, is probably um, is better if there's both budget and time um, available to do that. Um, I think it's introducing the um, and identifying um, the, the context within, within this. So, I always ask people to think about okay so who, who are the people you've asked to complete who are the people you've asked to complete this this process what are what are the, what is your relationship to them where are they based and understanding that context can really then help you as the coach to get into their world and understand what it is that that people are saying and why they might be saying it and and really help to, to i guess to drive insight into into what's coming out of that um you know, there's some data in in the report that talks about how the model is, is made up, and our, our standard model is made up of lead, manage, coach, influence, and core. Um, and there's more descriptions of, available when we send you the, the sample report. Uh, but also talking about the model, if it was a, a, a bespoke model for the client themselves. Um, Discuss confidentiality. We started with that. We kicked off at the beginning of this this um, online call. But it's it's saying so people understand. You know, who who actually has access to this report. And I guess it's agreeing the style of, of coaching feedback as well. This is about how, how do you want, how honest um, do we want to be in this process? Um, how comfortable are we feeling with with this le level of exposure to feedback? Um, so you, you kind of really get into their, into understanding how, how they would like to visit and um, view this data. And I think I think the other thing that we've, we've said as well is, is reviewing the data in context. So, are there some areas which are most relevant to this individual and how they're operating right now, which they really want to focus on? Do they want to, you know, I, th I think, um, you know, having having run hundreds of these sessions over the years, is is do we, is this someone that wants to do a deep dive into every number, analyse every every number, or is this someone that wants to look at the high level and look at where the, the, the big peaks and troughs are? So really getting understanding for how they'd like to view and, and understand the data. You know, this is coaching. You know, we're we're not there to give the answers, so it's it's following their interest. Um, the only the only thing that I think that um, we try to drive is that focus on the strengths before addressing areas of development. Again, uh, one to warm up, warm the conversation, um, and and but also to recognise that there are strengths in there, no matter how challenging the data or the feedback might be. Thinking about you know the strengths before we address those areas that we might otherwise want to focus on. Because fundamentally, what I've experienced is that people generally want to go straight to the 
the areas of development because you know that's our that's our kind of our evolution as you as it were you know this is where we've we've come from in terms of wanting to 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 develop ourselves and get away from danger or whatever it might be but focusing on those strengths really does help the conversation along when it comes to looking at i don't want to lose everything just it just to try and move on those areas for development and then you know ideally we're looking to drive through the 360 we're looking to drive some form of, of action plan and or, or certainly some next steps about what what might they do with this information now that you know seven to 15 people have, have given feedback to them uh, we like to encourage sharing of the results and be that whether it's in a summarized format so they say look as a result of giving these giving me this feedback or certainly sharing with their manager someone who can um someone who can can hold my feet to the fire and, and give me feedback along the way. And I'm not sure if you've seen the, the research by um, uh, Kilty and Goldsmith, which looked at the, the, the frequency of feedback post, post training or post, post an event like this. Um, and those people that got the most frequent feedback against the things that they're focusing on actually showed a, a great improvement. It's, it's common sense. But, um, you know, those things we focus on or people help us to focus on are the things we're likely to improve on. Remind remind candidates to follow up. So to, to look at those things and and to, to, to think about how are they going how are they going to hold themselves accountable. Um, and, and and I guess the the other the other the other part of this is is thinking about what what else that's you know there's going to be lots of feedback to to them personally. But what else? Where are the where else is their feedback required to go? Is there is there a larger? So, if you're doing a number of these 360s within with an organ, uh, with a, an organ, within an organisation, where uh, where are the trends? What else is going on? We can we can run trends reports um, for you if you run with multiple people, but you might also get a sense of when you're coaching these individuals. There's something else bigger going on here. Here's, there's a bigger challenge going on across all of these managers I'm working with. So here's some feedback to the organisation again, helping HR to think about their training budgets and where else they might, what other challenges might want to um, to address. And just just to give you a sense of the types of challenges you might you might face when you're when you're running these sessions, um, and it's just just to make you aware of. So people only focus on the negatives or positives. Um, you know this this is this is quite common. You have someone who's just oblivious to the things that are challenging. They only they can only see the positives, or or equally someone who can only see the negatives. And, and again, our job as the coach in this process is. Is to help to be objective and certainly to to to, to help them recognise there is potentially both of those things within this report. Um, that sense of becoming fixated on one piece of information, so we distort something out of proportion. So it's one one comment in the whole three out of all of those lines of data and on all of those comments in the three hundred and sixty um, that we distort that out of out of all proportion. We dismiss dismiss feedback from specific groups because we don't believe they're valid, but you know, these are the people we've asked to give the feedback. So again, helping them to recognise that these individuals spent time and this is this is how they're perceived. Um, okay. um, I'm sure we've all experienced those people that go go through the motions with um, with no intention to change. But th this sense of actually, I'm here and I'm I'm just going through this. But I think it's again um, a challenge for, for us to help help them to see potentially there is. There's some stuff in this, or actually, maybe it's not in this, but it's it's it, there's a conversation that's required, if that is if that is the case. Um, and that that sense of how do we how do we manage people that perhaps sort of find this this process quite overwhelming, um, and how do we manage them through that that process? Um, you know, I've, I've been in, in challenging conversations with these these processes, and and we've closed the 360, and the 360 wasn't the thing that they were ready to discuss that day. It was a it was a wider a wider conversation that was required, and that that's okay as well. So just I guess the more the more admin side of this process and 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 how it works. So really simple. Um, there's an online form. On that form, um, you provide us with the names and email addresses or email address of the individual you'd like to go through that process. On the date you've described, we send them a an invite. The individual, the candidate, then selects and submits their reviewers. The system then um, invites those reviewers to complete. They will complete. It takes somewhere between twenty to thirty minutes on on average to complete, and and then during that 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 time we will monitor and um, 
review how the progress is going. We'll let you know. We'll send automated reminders. Um, you know, generally we get very good completion. We, we very rarely get um, to a point where we can't produce a report for someone. And more often than not, we're in the sort of 90 to 100% completion for, for most 360s. At the end of that period, if everyone's completed and we're satisfied, we'll, we'll run the report. If people haven't completed, we'll always check in with you first to see whether the report is required or whether there's more time we can add more time on to, to try and um, increase participation. And then we'll produce the report, send that to you via PDF. Uh, later this year, um, in 2019, we'll be creating a dashboard. You'll be able to download those yourself. So that's that's coming through this year. So this is the the whistle stop tour through the 360. Um, I'll be able to answer questions. Damien will have um, be able to provide my contact details if you would like to talk more about the 360. As part of this process, you'll have access to a sample 360 and this material. Uh, but if you'd like more information to take to your um, take to your clients um, in discussions around this product, then um, please do let us know. Um, thank you for your time. Um, I look forward to, to speaking to you soon. Um, but uh, please do get in touch if you have any questions in the meantime. All, right, all the best. Thank you.